Hello guys and welcome back to the channel. Now this is the first episode for the year where we crack into another build. I just picked up the 80 from the graveyard and I tell you what, we ain't done with this thing yet. All right, so the history of the 80 series, obviously last year we did a budget build, which went really well. You guys seem to enjoy that. Everyone likes building a cheap car, but I can't stop there. Now we're gonna really hook into this thing and do the part two build. Um, so we've got some massive plans for this. You may or may not, if you know of my Instagram and you check out that, you know some of the ideas that I wanna do with this thing. But I'm gonna pretty much just run along as we go. First things first, we're gonna gut this thing because I'm changing a lot of stuff inside and outside to the look and feel of this thing, starting with this piece of metal, which I need to get out of here, which is for this car. So stay tuned to what we're gonna do, but there's a bit of body work to do on here. Shitload of interior stuff, so we're gonna hook into it. As per usual, starting a new build, you want to do it right from the beginning. So all the bolts and bits and pieces that come out, you make sure you put it in a little container, put labels on there as well so you know where they go. Um, I don't know if you noticed already, got a few new tools. Start of a new year, I had to go and give myself a little birthday present to start off the new year. So popped down to Super Cheap and got some new tools. This is their new 12 volt stuff, which I didn't know they had, but God damn, it's so handy. Nice and small. I actually got a kit for my four wheel drive and also a kit for the shed as well, but you'll see me using these a bunch because they're super small, super handy. Ah! Filthy. All right, we're getting most of the inside gutted at the moment. Now I'm gonna spill the beans of what we're gonna do with the back half of this car. I am going to make this whole thing a two-door wagon. Now, I initially bought this car and had plans to make it a ute. So like a, everyone does the chops, the single cabs, tray back. But as soon as I had these doors and went camping, I kind of fell in love with the wagon. So I was like, how can I make it different? And my friend Mark Boxer from Hoon TV had just finished at the time a build of his 80 series and he's done exactly that, fell in love with it. So I'm gonna do the same. And that's basically welding in the back doors, all the back windows and making it like a two door panel truck. So to make that happen, we need to gut all this glass out of the windows and use that steel to shape up some uh, panels, tack them in there and basically do a whole lot of bodywork to make it happen. And this. Might actually need that later. Oops. Whoa. Ah. Whoa, look at that. All right, got that first window out and I've just noticed a bit of rust here. God damn it, which is kind of expected on an old car. The water runs down the seals, obviously gathers there and it's kind of gone through. So lucky we're gutting this thing. Can do a little bit of repair as I put those panels in, but doesn't look too bad. Alrighty, we're getting very close now, starting to pull the carpet out. I did end up having to rip the whole lot out, front seats and everything, because I haven't decided on seats yet. I don't know, comment down below whether you know of any other seats than the factory ones. I don't know if Recaro's or anything um, are made to suit these, but I wanna put some sort of race seat in here. Then once the back's done and it's fully sound deadened, um, put some underlay in there as well, some acoustic lining to make the thing sound like a bloody cathedral. And uh, then we'll be basically looking at doing all that metal work, but this stuff's from 1996. I'm finding bottle caps from who knows what. Like, someone tell me from the 90s. This looks like a little moose head. We've got a Coopers on there. What else have we got? Some coins from bloody 1975. 
Ew. Nice. All righty, folks, it's time to announce the winner from last episode's giveaway. Now, we were having the hot lap in the Built Not Bought truck. So, 13th of Feb, I'm going down to the Queensland Raceway for the Power Play event down around the track. So, we did draw a random winner from the comments, and it was Brock Hunter. Now, he's super stoked to go for a lap in the weapon. So, Brock, send me a message, and on the day, come down and find the stand. I'll be in the shed there, and we get to jump in for a hot lap in the Built Not Board truck. A few laps around Queensland Raceway, and have a good time. Now, also, we've got a new giveaway for this week. We're gonna do a, a toolkit giveaway, actually, down here. So, the brand new 198-piece toolkit. This is the one that I actually keep in my full drive. Perfect for throwing in that rear drawer. Pretty much got every tool you need for being out on the tracks. Now, to win this toolkit, all you gotta do is comment a bunch of those fire emojis down below, um, and I'll be picking a winner at random in next week's episode. So get commenting for them. Um, a lot of people are asking about this mullet thing as well, and that did happen from a few episodes ago, but like I said, the way the whole thing's filmed a bit ahead of time, you'll probably see that uh, not next week, but the week after we'll be doing that mullet thing, just the way that obviously I've recorded ahead of time. Um, so that'll be coming very soon, and we'll see you guys in that episode with a new flash looking mullet. Back to the episode. Alrighty, so now the fun begins. We're at the front end. We're going to be pulling this motor out now. We are going to be using the same engine, but not the exact same one. You may remember in a previous episode, I was doing the 105 FTE conversion. Now, the motor that came out of that car was a 1FZFE, now it's the uh, electronic ignition version. Now in the 80 series, they only came out with the distributor version, which isn't as good, obviously with water crossings, things like that. Um, so we've gone for the more modern um, electronic ignition one. Now we are doing a full build on that car and as parts come in, I'll show you guys, but there will be a full episode on building that thing up right down from the block. But for today, I just wanna get this motor out of here so I can start cleaning up the engine bay and then we'll look at stripping down the motor itself and getting it down to the block. Whoa! Yeah, that happened. Broke it. Whoa. While I'm tinkering away doing this, I have a bit of a dilemma and I want you guys input because I genuinely don't know what to do. It's auto at the moment and I don't know whether to change it manual. A lot of guys that do these FZs, they keep them auto but there is a restriction there with power. They don't handle too much with these stock boxes, even if you put a little shift kit in there. I'm kind of thinking to go manual now, so I can do the Lumi bash, I can like dump that clutch. You know I'm all about that kind of stuff. So I don't know, comment down below, we're gonna go auto or manual because I was pretty much set on the auto, but now the more I think about it, the manual buy me a bit better option because of the way I want to drive this thing. So. Yeah, a bit stuck what to do. And if anyone's an expert, how much power can the uh, manuals handle and how easy are they to convert from auto to manual in these cars? I'm hoping the clutch and that just bolts up because surely the manufacturer would just leave the holes there. You know what I mean? Okay, now that was a bit of a mission, but we've got the motor out. Now, ugh, I ended up having to do what we did on that 105 recently, which was drop the engine mounts out so I could lower the motor and box down to access those rear bell housing bolts. They're always super tough to get to, and of course, I forgot one at the end when we were trying to pull it out, but everything came out. There was one earth strap connected and the power steering line, which was the same thing that was connected in that 105 swap. I don't know why, I always forget about these power steering lines. But anyway, we've got the motor out now, so now it's time to pretty much strip that engine bay of every piece of wire and hose that isn't necessary, give it a water blast, hit it with the gurney, clean it up, ready to give it a lick of paint, ready for that new engine to go in.
Alrighty guys, back to the back end of the car now that we've cleaned out the engine bay, I'm going to start with welding in the back panels. That's obviously what we're doing making this a panel truck. So I'm going to start with the bottom half, we'll worry about the sheets a little bit later, but for now I've already had a bit of a play taking the door handy out. Obviously we've got to shave that off and put a little infill piece which I've cut out here. So I'll have a play with that um, just to get the welder set up and see how it looks before we go and do the major sections. Uh, but inside, we've obviously gutted this door and I've got a bit of this bar here. So this is, I think it was four or five mil solid bar. And watch this, ready? That's the last time that door ever closes. <laughs> Cause what I'm gonna do is weld in a piece of bar in this gap here and that'll fill that little gap. All I'm gonna do is kind of a few tacks along the joins because you don't wanna heat it up too much. And then I'll fill the rest with some fiberglass filler. Um, so it's nice and strong and pretty much just tack it around, do the bottom piece and get this bottom section sorted. And then we can start worrying about up here and the window as well. Alrighty guys, so we basically got all the welding up of that back door. Now there was two ways I could go about this and I wasn't really sure how best to do it because I've gone for option B basically, but the first option was to fully weld this completely, but I'm worried that too much heat will create too much warping in the panels and I won't be able to get it straight again. So what I've done is just a series of tacks and let it cool along the way. And I've gone for a different product to try and finish that seam off, bit more extra strength and help finish that clean paneled look as well. So. I was down at Super Cheap, just running along the shelves trying to find out the best thing to use and I found this stuff called Metal Tech Filler. Now essentially after reading the description, it's basically like a Bondo bog filler, but it's got fiberglass and stainless steel infused. So it has a ton of strength. It really sticks to bare metal and aluminum and stuff like that. So I'm gonna run a section of that down to fill these gaps where the rod is um, and then just get that really base kind of sand done and then finish it off with some normal body filler and that to really fill out that gap, get that extra strength and keep the panel nice and straight at the same time. So we're getting pretty damn close with finishing off the bodywork here for that join there. Put on that filler and then I went over with a layer of actual fine bulk to finish off the little holes. Couple of little ripples, but I'm gonna wait to get a base coat of primer on there to just see how it looks. Um, because I'll end up probably wrapping this in a matte sort of finish. So it doesn't need to be super straight because a lot of those curves will be taken out because it's not gonna be a gloss finish. So I'll leave that for now, but now I'm gonna start worrying about doing these panels here. So the first thing to start off with, we need some sort of bracing in there to one, obviously weld the piece two on behind and two, give it some support in there. And because it's slightly curved upwards, as I place the piece on, I need to tack it and then kind of bend it around that radius. So having these bars in there will help make that radius happen. Um, so basically what I've done is just cut a couple of pieces that'll fit and then got a longer section of bar to basically run across the front section and that'll make sure it's flush the whole way. And then just sandwich in a piece of that steel there they're gonna to use to plate it up. It's 1.6 mil, I think. And then that means when it gets tacked on there, it should leave just enough gap in here for that piece to basically flush up and it will help keep a nice smooth finish. So basically tack these couple of bars on there, check the alignment. I'm gonna have a bit of a level here to make sure that we're doing them nice and straight isn't super crucial, but it's just nice to get it good. Um, and then do the two bars in there, probably one on top, one on bottom, and then I can start stenciling in the bigger sections, get them cut out and tack it in and see how it's looking. Okay. 
Okay, don't ask me what happened to that top bar, but it's not as straight as it's meant to be. It's about a thousand millimeters out. Bottom one's pretty good, but uh, I don't know what happened here. Maybe I was only looking through one eye. Alrighty, Ledgers, I think we're gonna wrap it up there for this week's episode. Uh, it's taken a little bit longer than expected to do that back half. I did wanna smash it into one um, episode, but we're gonna split it up into two next week and obviously finish off this engine bay that we were cleaning up before. So we'll see you guys next week. Make sure to subscribe to the channel, check out our website, which has the latest merchandise, and we'll see you in the next episode. Guys, if you like this video, make sure to click up here to subscribe to the channel. Click over here for our latest merchandise on our website. And down below or to the side, I'm not sure where it is, is, is our last episode. If you haven't watched it, click on that to check it out. See you guys.